I'm OG Ananobi of the Toronto Raptors, and you're listening to the Double Clutch Podcast. Hello, and welcome back to the Double Clutch NBA Podcast. I'm Matt Wellington, and I'm joined tonight once again by Mike Miller. Hello. Who's, who's just flown back in from, you know, baby duties. Yeah, I had to go and get nasal spray. Nasal and spray. Decongestion. And I'm a complete mess. That sounds like a fun way to spend a Thursday night. Oh my God, it's been a, a, a fun <laughs> Thursday full stop. In fact, it's been a fun few days. Um, but welcome back. Yeah, no, thank you. Anyway, there, there is somebody else here. Uh, Mr. Oppenheim's over over there in Brooklyn. Uh, Mike, you have anything to say about my borough this week? Or are we just going to let <laughs> that one I've got too slide? many things to say about your borough this week. Okay, good. <laughs> I, I, I have nothing. I'm all um, Brooklyn hated out. But no one called me out for that. I got called no. out for other things, but not Brooklyn hate. What did you get called out for? Oh, just random stuff, you know. I don't want to get into it now. I'm tired. I'm covered in uh, baby sick, and uh, you know, let's just let's just leave it there for now. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a fun pod if this is how we're going to start. But, oh, uh, no, I no no one decided to uh, stand up and support Brooklyn and claim that I was hating on New York too much. To Which, be fair, we do have bigger fish to fry, so ouch. maybe like the next time we have a community meeting, I'll bring it up. Yeah, please do. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when I let you two on pods together. This is brilliant. I mean, yeah, I got the... well, but I was pleased to receive your facts today anyway, Matt, which came from David Falk and just had the words, I'm back on it. Uh, <laughs> very, very <laughs> aren't you? I was going to say facts. I mean, we've got a couple of those. We've got a couple of those machines left at the office, but I wouldn't know where to start in terms of using them. Do you just use them to keep doors open now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the wrong generation, man. I don't got a clue where to start. Oh dear. I don't know anyway. facts. <laughs> anyway, just a few housekeeping duties before we get onto the main topic of the show, which is obviously going to be the um, the NBA playoffs, which are now all sorted and ready. Um, Mr. Hugh Hopkins has been doing a lot of work in the background behind the scenes. Um, Doing some, MB, uh, WM, so doing some WNBA content recently. Um, the first WNBA podcast is actually up on iTunes right now. That's episode 294, which uh, Jamie actually kindly edited for us. And that's a, a guest interview with um, Isabel Harrison. So please go and check that out. Hugh's been pumping everything he's got into the WNBA at the moment. He's got some previews coming up. We're going to hopefully put together a bit of a section on the website where you'll be able to go in and preview all of the teams that are involved. But the, the WNBA has just had a big rebrand um, so it seems like a really cool time to sort of get in and, and push that. And there's a, there's an article or two on the website that, that's gone up recently in terms of um, the WNBA as well. So go check those out. Um, Tom Wade has done his case for why Buddy Hill should be the most improved player. Um, and Hugh Hopkins, again, his name just keeps coming up, um, did a wonderful piece about Joe Harris's jump shot, um, who I'm sure we'll get onto in a minute, considering we've got... Mr. Oppenheim, the uh, Brooklyn resident here with us tonight. Um, so, yeah, go and check out doubleclutch.uk. Loads of great content that's gone up there recently. Um, as ever, if you, you know, you, you listen to the show and you enjoy what we're doing, please give us a review on iTunes or whatever platform it is you listen to. And please do, like we urge this, get in touch with us on, on Twitter. Um, we do really enjoy fan engagement and we had quite a lot of it. Certainly, Mike and uh, Jamie had quite a lot of it last week when they were they were going out and slandering a few things and and having a go about people. <laughs> it's always good to be controversial. <laughs> I, I have no comment. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, please go and check out doubleclutch.uk uh, and follow us on Twitter at doubleclutch.uk as well. Anyway, um, we are moving on to the the NBA playoffs. It seems like the regular season's just flown by, um, which is really odd because like the last month i think it's safe to say many of us here were just you know it was flagging um the interest kind of dies but you get to this period and the last couple of nights this week have just been completely bonkers we've had wade's retirement video which was you know we had the budweiser commercial which i don't know if you guys saw but like that was that was quite emotional um very impressed with the budweiser marketing team for that one um, I, I got very odd looks from my <laughs> co-passengers on the train back from London uh, as I sat there getting teary-eyed over a Budweiser advert. <laughs> that actually, like, the the, the actual the fact it was Bud, uh, uh, an advert for beer annoyed me. The actual content itself was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Is it worse because it's an American beer? Like, if this was, like, a Guinness <laughs> commercial, would you have felt better about things? I, I'm well, no, because, like Guinness is, this is Irish, exactly. It's like you know, 
and I'm not a big fan of carling. Um, oh god, it's piss water. Exactly. <laughs> so, have, have we got any good British beers? Like I can't even name a British beer. <laughs> How can you not name a bridge? Like, uh, you know, maybe if we looked at sort of the the Camden ales, something like that, or Whitstable Pale Ales, lovely. I'd even go down the Doombar route. That's another ale I like. Um, well, basically, nice. ales. Give me some ales. If it was an ale, <laughs> Dwayne Wade <laughs> in an ale advert, I'm all <laughs> over that. Yeah, Dwayne Wade doing a craft beer commercial. No, I'm amazing. totally down with that. Yeah, Budweiser's. But Bud have been doing some weird things. They did like a, a Game of Thrones tie-in recently, which was interesting for bud for bud light but obviously everyone's game of thrones mental at the moment um because it's back on sunday night so it's just been anywhere you go at the moment you're seeing game of thrones marketing and i read to, i read earlier today actually that it's um it's a way of recuperating the money that they've spent on the special effects because obviously as the show has got bigger the special effects budgets have got mm. more and more so they've gone out to more and more marketing people to try and get some more money back in to cover the cost because they just never assumed it was going to be as as huge as it has ended up being um you know arguably the biggest tv show of all time but anyway so, so what you're trying to say is if you run a craft ale house out there <laughs> in the yonder and you're interested in helping double clutch recoup some of their operating costs yes absolutely. then by all means get in touch at admin at double clutch dot uk that's smooth all sponsored does that mean friend. we're gonna have to increase our special effects though have we got a special effects budget um, <laughs> hang on let me just check <laughs> <laughs> No, that is just, that... talk about basketball soon. <laughs> yeah, no, but that is a genuine point, actually. If you're a UK NBA fan and you're listening to us and you dabble in video content, for example, please get in touch because we would love to get some video wizards yeah, on board to, to help us out with things. Um, certainly something that I know Mike has, has stressed that we're really wanting to get out and, and do. So please, yeah, get in touch. There's a Join DC tab on the website, actually, if you're uh, interested in contributing anything towards us uh, in the next coming season which seems weird saying that considering we're still at the playoffs go um but yeah no it's it's been bonkers wade wade retired dirk retired i cried at that one i i will happily admit i cried at that one that was far too emotional for it as a european nba fan to see that one and then last night the the whole league just went bonkers um and oh and magic johnson quit the lakers <laughs> yeah that. how the lakers have managed to stay one of the biggest news topics this week is just <laughs> oh my god they it's, always find something yeah I, I i kid you not i didn't even know that had happened until about three o'clock the, the, like british time even though we've got our double clutch slack and everyone had gone on about it i hadn't gone in the general channel because it scares the life out of me at the moment <laughs> <laughs> like 700 messages or whatever but like I, I didn't know and i went on cbs on my lunch break and it was like the headline news and i was like Shit. <laughs> I, I just woke up to just, uh, I was like, why are people talking about magic? And like, I had all these bleacher report notifications. And then I was sat there trying to eat like a bowl of muesli at five in the morning. Just like, I don't even understand. It was insane. Um, it it was. And, and, and Dave Yeager has been fired tonight. So yeah, it just never stops. Like, yeah. Cause you know, that's what you do when the teams have the most successful season they've had in about, 12 years yeah there's also reports from from Woj that um they're interested in luke walton if he ends up being fired by the lakers so luke's luke's not as unloved as people seem to think he is anyway um but yeah no last night was was completely bonkers the nuggets were down by double digits against the the timber wolves or the dire wolves as they seem to be at the moment um and they 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 came back and won that one the blazers were down by 28 points to the sacramento kings and they came back and won that one and they only played six players for the entire game and it wasn't Damien Lillard and it wasn't CJ McCollum it was Scal Le Bizier and a bunch of guys you, you don't tend to you know know um, and both of those wins meant that the Houston Rockets who had have been magnificent since the All-Star break tumbled all the way down to the fourth seed which means they now face the Utah Jazz in round one which is you know that's a nasty matchup um, but anyway we'll, we'll go on to the matchups um, which which conference do you want to start first guys Let's go well, east because well, Jamie's out in the, the east. Two? We'll go in the east, shall we? Okay. Let's well, go we'll, east. We'll, we'll go with the Milwaukee Bucks. Who obviously, ended up in the the Eastern Conference's number one seed. They will play the Detroit Pistons, who finished in the eighth. They snuck in on the night. Um, Blake Griffin's out injured for this one, so it, it could could be easy. Um, what's your general thoughts on on the Bucks and, and Pistons? Is, is there any form of excitement in this matchup? I mean, the Bucks swept the regular season series with Detroit during the uh, already, so. 
I, I don't see there being too much hope here for the Detroit Pistons. As great as it is, them being back in the playoffs, like I think Dwayne Casey would, would probably be thinking, oh, I've not got LeBron to play this year. Silent cheering, and then realising he's got Giannis to deal with instead. <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to reach into Joe Hulbert's cupboard and bring out the broom. <laughs> Straight away. Uh, this, is that, is that this, broom got a new coat of paint? I, I think it's been re brushed i don't know what they put those little things on the end yeah <laughs> yeah it's 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 this broom's ready to go it's play it's playoff season playoff ready broom <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i don't see how how they can they just don't have the personnel to compete with the bucks the bucks are just ridiculous even when they don't play half their uh guys they're still winning so yeah they they're, they're going to cakewalk this the 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 Pistons have been terrible. Not terrible. They, yeah, no, they've been terrible. They've really fallen down <laughs> in the past few weeks. They they were on track for what the sixth seed, like yeah. about four weeks ago, maybe even the fifth seed, and they've just no, it's the sixth definitely, and they've just gone plummeting. Almost ended up out of the out of the race completely. Jamie, what about what about you? Yeah, no excitement for this one whatsoever. Uh, you just kind of want to see Milwaukee <laughs> be your voice. as ruthless. <laughs> and brutal as possible make a statement and then be done with business yeah i I think the only way i see detroit having any chance in this series is if they're really hot from downtown because the bucks let you shoot a lot of threes um because they're they're built they're built around stopping you in the paint they basically just sit brooke lopez there and and he he acts as a deterrent under the rim and that's what they've they've done all season and fair play to you know mike budenholzer he's come in and in the summer and completely turned this team team around. Janice is out there shooting threes the last couple of weeks and has looked pretty terrifying doing it. Um, the, the Bucks have got far too much for Detroit to handle. It's basically the the worst possible matchup I think the, the Pistons could have probably hoped for, but I, I don't see... I've got the broom as well. I think this broom's going to be well used by the end by um, by the end of this, this discussing this series, but yeah... Um, Reggie Jackson's been pretty good the, the second half of this season, so I guess he might be a bright spark for them. But I'm really, really yeah, you're really stretching straws. this, aren't you? Just like, I straws. really want to fill at least two minutes on on the Pistons. Yeah, it's well, like yeah. it says a lot when you're having to go. Yeah, Reggie Jackson's been good. Yeah, yeah give a shout out to Luke Kennard while we're at it. Yeah, why not? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> He's going to no, get screwed over anyway because he's played yeah. Eric Bledsoe and Eric Bledsoe has been phenomenal on the defensive end this season. So yeah, and he's actually torched the Bucks, um, the, the Bucks, the, the Pistons this season. Sorry. So yeah, I I don't see uh see this one being too competitive. So that one's at twelve o'clock on um on Sunday night. So that'd be a late one. I believe it's on Sky Sports as well, but you can obviously get it on League Pass, um, which is probably the best place to watch the, the playoffs in general anyway at the moment. Um, what we have got. On uh, Saturday, I'm flicking back and forth between days here, is the uh, Toronto Raptors and the Orlando Magic. That's taking place at 10 o'clock on the Saturday night. You can actually watch that in London with Mike Miller if you want. Tell them yeah. where, Mike. Tell them where. Uh, N1 Bar, London Bridge. Uh, get on our social media feeds, find the Eventbrite and RSVP so you can book yourself a, a ticket. I'll be there, Hugh will be there, and a bunch of other nba fans from the uk so nba in the uk will be a physical a physical meetup and it'll be um beer fueled i imagine here's but a question only, for you. only craft ales which nba arena arena's atmosphere are you going to be basing the m1 bar on on saturday night Ooh. um is it going to be the scotia bank you know home of the toronto raptors loud proud or are you going to be a little bit more I no, I think I think we're going to be more like um, post sellout Oracle <laughs> Arena, or, sorry, like, or pre sellout rather. So we're going to be that hardcore fan base in a really uh, small. I don't I don't know whether M1's outdated, so I'm not going to say outdated arena. But it's <laughs> a, a small, compact place that you can feel the noise, uh, and there's true people there. We're going to be like the the, the We Believe Warriors uh, Oracle oh, wow. Arena crowd. Who's Baron Davis? Is that Hugh? Um, yeah, <laughs> he can be Baron Davis if he wants to be. Yeah, why not? Let's let's let him be Baron Davis. Anyway, um, the Raptors entered the playoffs with probably under as much pressure as, as they've ever been in. They they went in for everything this season. They traded for Kawhi Leonard and they've brought in pieces around him. Mark Gasol just after the trade, uh, just before the trade deadline. 
Um, they've been on a tear. They, they've looked they look pretty good. Um, they're going against the worst kind of matchup they could have hoped for, I think. Orlando seem to have snuck in there. Fair credit to all the Orlando Magic UK fans because there's flipping loads of them. Um, they're a very, they're a, they are a massively vocal bunch. Um, but nobody, even the most optimistic of um, UK Magic fans, was probably expecting them to sneak into the, to get into the playoffs this season. Um, and and they've done so. You know, Joe Herbert wrote a piece for our, our season guide about the evolution of tall ball and how they were doing something a little bit differently. Um, well, it, it's it's paying off for them, and they're a mad. They're a team that's just basically got nothing to lose. They 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 weren't supposed to be here. Um, they were left for dead at twenty and thirty one earlier in the regular season, and then they've rallied and finished twenty two and nine. So they've they've completely turned it around. Um, so yeah, what, you, what are your general thoughts on on this series? I mean, do you think the Raptors are, do you think there's a little bit of a spark there for Orlando? Do you think they can take a game or two, or do you think Toronto's just you know got too much pressure on them and they're gonna they're gonna roll with it this year? I, I get what you're saying, Matt, about Orlando having a spark and this could be a bad matchup for for Toronto. I'm not buying it though. Um, this is going to be a Raptors team that's all business. You have too much veteran leadership now. Um, they're they're going to go in. They just want to get done with this first round so they can prepare, rest up for round two. Um, I am interested, though, to see how the, how the young Magic players do handle this. This is a new environment for them, and I want to see if they can step up. I, I, I'm not going to be surprised if they, they sneak one game out of it. It is hard to pull off a sweep in the playoffs. Um, but if you look at their rosters and compare them position by position, is there a single magic player who's better in his spot than a, than a Raptors equivalent and top to bottom, I'd say pretty much no, probably Vucevic. That's about yeah. it. Really? You reckon Vucevic is actually like, I, I must come across as the biggest Vucevic hater. ever. I've been, <laughs> on, I've been on the trade Vooch wagon for two seasons, but do you actually think, he is even this iteration of Mark Gasol. If you change their usage rates and workloads, do you actually think he is a better player than him? I think yes. Based on his performances against the Raptors in the regular season, he's a player that gives them a bit of a, a bit of a nightmare. They they don't know whether to to use Serge on him or now they've got Mark. Whether they use Mark Gasol on him, but I think both of those players are probably a little bit too slow, which leads me to think that Nick Nurse will end up playing Siakam. But I think Siakam gives up size to him, um, and Vucevic this season's kind of proved that he he's got a bit of an all round game now. Like he can go out to the perimeter and, and and score on you from there, or he can take you in the post. I think he's a I think he's the the best player in this series for the Magic. Um, oh yeah, but, for the Magic definitely. And I think Aaron Gordon's going to probably play well. He's he's done terrifically against um, Kawhi Leonard, like throughout the time he's ever played against Kawhi Leonard. So I think there's a couple of little things in there that would lead me to think that the Rap the the Magic, sorry, could probably steal a game or two from from the Raptors. But I'm like I don't want to sound like I'm a, I'm egging on the the Magic here because anyone who knows me knows that I'm taking the Raptors every day of the week. Um, the, the Raptors are all business. Jamie's completely correct. Like this is <laughs> this team has been built for for this period now and you've had Kawhi Leonard who's had such an outstanding season for them um, considering the, 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 the sort of problems and the injuries he's had recently um, and then they go out and add Danny Green and Norman Powell's been playing really well the last couple of weeks like they're getting production from players and I think they've got so much depth even adding someone like Jody Meeks who, you know a, a couple of weeks ago they're just they've got shooters everywhere and they're going to be one of those teams that's that's difficult to play against i think orlando will unfortunately fall in the first round but it's it's great to see them back in there and you know to give the the fans something to cheer about because let's be honest they've been miserable for a long long time now <laughs> yeah definitely um uh, but it's it, you know you mentioned how many hardcore magic fans there are like it amazes me, given the amount of um, chirping that goes on about <laughs> true fandom. You know, when the NBA London game tickets came out, you know, you have to be a true fan to to get to be entitled to go to this game, that sort of thing. Like, fair play to the Orlando Magic UK fans who have all booked flights to Orlando, and have, got, <laughs> have got got their playoff tickets already. That's that's just that's that's awesome. I always I find it that. amazing it's that easy to get playoff tickets. <laughs> Although I, I guess I guess there's there's multiple games in the series. It's like um, our very own Josh Coyne and Scott Dillon did, did some fantastic artwork for us in our season guide. Like he, um, they're both off to Boston for the the first couple of games of 
of their series. So, you know, it can't be too difficult to get tickets. Maybe we should do this. <laughs> Maybe we should. Maybe next year's uh, playoff watch party can be somewhere where there's... Uh, <laughs> be in a dive bar like, in Boston. <laughs> yeah. Or Brooklyn. Could be in Brooklyn. Go hang out with Jamie for, a, a you know, a couple of games. Oh, no. Sorry, you're not welcome here, Mike. <laughs> oh, that's brutal. Didn't, didn't want to come anyway. <laughs> one little one little thing you said on the podcast is just going to stay in your relationship for the rest of your life. <laughs> uh, brilliant. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's the ten o'clock game on Saturday night. So please um, go down to the M1 bar and check that out, or you know, watch it on Sky and get involved with hashtag MB in the UK. Um, next, we've got the Philadelphia 76ers who ended up being the three seed. They will play Jamie's Brooklyn Nets. Um, Joel Embiid's potentially out of the first game of this series with a sore left knee. Although the, the phrase load management's been used, and then the, there's a lot of people saying that they've played him too much in this se- too much this season. I think he's averaged a career high in terms of minutes um, during the regular season, which is funny because they went on about how they were they were going to manage him and stop him from you know being in this situation. But Joel Embiid's one of those guys who just once he gets injured, everyone seems everyone everyone has a sort of high mouth moment and panics, um, which is understandable, but. Given his track record, it is. Given his track yeah. record, yeah. If if Embiid plays in this series, though, um, which he will do, then this this is kind of going one way. I think it's, I think it's a six or seven game series. I but I, I do think Philly will sneak it out just because of the, the experience and the the players that they've got there. But that whole. Um, so you think with Embiid, it's six or seven? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I I I think Brooklyn are I think Brooklyn are going to surprise a lot of people. Um, I think DeAndre uh, DeAndre um, D'Angelo Russell and and Spencer Dinwiddie are, are going to cause problems. I think they've got a really good backcourt depth. Chris Levert's been playing well. Joe Harris is the best three point shooter in the league. Like Brett Brown's going to have to, you know, earn his money uh, in this series. Um, so I think if Embiid if Embiid's you know out with a couple of games with injuries, then it, it could be you know, really up for the, the taking. Go ahead, Mike. Slander Brooklyn again. What do you think? <laughs> um, I, th- I think if Embiid is out, then there's a, a greater chance. Like, But you've still got to beat some incredible talent there. And I, I just... There are holes you can attack. Obviously, JJ Redick on defense. Uh, he's going to be, hot, you know highlighted a lot and I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see him as often as we would have done because he's he's just like as much as he brings to the offense and stretching the floor he's he's a huge chink in the defense um but Tobias Harris is great Jimmy Butler is great Ben Simmons barring a jump shot is great there there's a hell of a lot for for Brooklyn to handle I'm you know I'm, I'm I wouldn't be surprised if they get two games out of it, but I don't know if I see it going as far as six. I'm sorry. I fell asleep there. Are you done talking? <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Tell us, tell us why your Brooklyn Nets have a chance in this series against the healthy 76ers. Let me tell you something about these Brooklyn Nets. All right, guys, this team are not afraid of anything. No moment is too big for this team. Okay, this is a team that actually bonded around coming through in the clutch. The whole season turned around. They lost a few games in a row at the buzzer. They said, enough of this, and then they went on a tear. You got Jared Allen, who legitimately does not care who's coming down the lane. And most importantly, we have D'Angelo Russell, who is convinced he is the Knights King, for crying out loud. (laughs) You think this team's afraid of Philadelphia? Hey, Joel you don't Embiid? have to be afraid. You can you can not be afraid of sticking your fingers in an electrical socket. If you stick your <laughs> fingers in an electrical what? socket, it's still gonna hurt. Like you don't have like the fear factor. Great, you're not afraid of them. They shouldn't be afraid of them because it you know it's basketball. They like I get I get that, but it doesn't mean they're gonna win just because they're not afraid. Like I I I think there'll be some competitive moments, but at the end of the day, if if Philly if Philly don't come out of this, um, I, that sounds like I'm backtracking now, and I'm not. Um, I would be, I would be gobsmacked. Joel Embiid infects the whole series. If if Embiid yeah. plays game one and he 
does what he's done all season against them and scores 38 and they can't guard him, the, the series is probably over in four or five games. If Joel Embiid doesn't play game one and he's doubt he, he and there's a lot of doubt and doesn't play game two, then I think it, it will open up the series. I think that the way this team was put together, especially with um, Harris joining just before the trade deadline, you've got Simmons, Reddick, Butler, Harris and Embiid who've only played 10 games together this season. You know, they've had 28 games in that period of time where they could have played together. Um, there's probably going to be a little bit of chemistry issues there. They might come out more in the playoffs when it, it slows down. But I actually think that if the game slows down, it's going to suit Philly a lot more because they've, they've been built around pace all season, but so have Brooklyn. So you've got two teams that can run each other off the court if they want to. But I think if they slow it down like it is traditional in the playoffs, then I think Philly has the edge because of the talent that they have there. And there's no way in hell Jarrett Allen and Ed Davis and, and some of those other guys can can stop Embiid if he's, you know, having 39 points and 30 rebounds and six assists, which is what he had last time he played Brooklyn. So uh, it's, it is all dependent on one man, which, you know, it sucks quite a bit. Um, but I, I think Brooklyn are, Jamie's right, they're not scared of anybody. They've played the Warriors several times this season and had some great results. Um, they've looked like they've been in all of these games against the big teams. Me and Mike did a pod a couple of months ago when we were talking about the Nets' chance of getting in the playoffs and we were both a little bit doubtful of how they were going to perform against some of the top teams and they've gone out and won the games they, they, they needed to win. So they're not scared of anybody. But I've, I've got it going six or seven games, I think, this series. Yeah, I think so too. And, and in all seriousness, um, the, the, the one way that Brooklyn actually does well in this series is if you do have those on-court chemistry issues with Philadelphia, yeah. who who who's going to be the top dog? If, if they have that kind of fight, everyone knows what's happening in Brooklyn. There, there's, there's no question about the pecking order. This is, It's going to be a high pick for D'Angelo Russell or Spencer Dinwiddie every single time down the floor, and that's how the offense is going to operate. You don't know what's going to happen once the pressure of the playoffs actually picks up for Philadelphia. They've, if, if Embiid's out game one, that's a massive, massive chance to, yeah. to swing momentum. And, if, and so that their best bet is Embiid's out and they manage to get that. And that, that quite frankly, worries me if that's your best bet. But fair play to him. If, if he's out, I, I, that makes that first game, despite the fact Embiid will be missing, that makes it more exciting, if that makes sense, because it will make the series more competitive. Yeah. No, I, I don't I, want I, Philly to have any excuses when we beat them. <laughs> nah, screw that. <laughs> the excuses is that Jimmy Butler will throw his toys out the pram and then Ben Simmons will throw his toys out the pram. <laughs> we, we know the story with the Philadelphia 76ers, but, you know. Well, on the flip side, the repercussions could be huge. Because if, if, if Brooklyn were to win, then what, where are Philly supposed to go now? Because they've gone from process to this, this needs to happen now. Charles. We are... It's, it's process, <laughs> but they, they, you know, they've got big decisions to make this summer as to who whom they're going to re-sign, things like that. And um, you know, if they if they can't get out the first round, which I, again I I think they will, but yeah. if they can't, then that's that's a, a massive slight on Elton Brand's brief tenure because well, he, he's them pulled the making, trigger here. The whole yeah, the the whole point of them making the moves this 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 season was that they wanted to become a powerhouse, and they've they've done that. They've they've made the moves at the right time to be truly competitive in the Eastern Conference with the the way that it's it's fallen this season. But like <laughs> for years, they've been the punchline, and if they were knocked out in the first round of this year's playoffs, then I don't think they'd ever. No one would ever let them live it down. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm not sure they're a powerhouse though. I'll be honest. I think right, if you look. They, 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 maybe it's because they haven't gelled, or they, you know, they've been yeah. through transitions, and they've certainly got the personnel to be one. But the record, to me, doesn't suggest they are a, a powerhouse. Not no. quite. No, they're they're they're, they're well, they're, they've they're a strange team. They've always been a strange team. But yeah, I've I've um I, I'm probably taking Philly in in seven if if Embiid is is injured. Um, if Embiid's playing and he's you know fully healthy and he's just killing them, then it's probably four or five. But yeah, we'll move on. Where are you um, going with four, five, six, or seven? <laughs> my notes have I've actually got four three in my notes, so I'm going I'm going seven. seven. I'm going Jamie? Seven. Nets in three. Philly quits <laughs> after game three. Uh, uh, so stairs moment in Rocky. It's just it collapses. I'll go I'll go Philly in five. 
Okay, well, moving on. <laughs> We've got the uh, the Boston Celtics and uh, actually, sorry, that um, that Nets game is at seven thirty. So that's the the early game on it's Saturday the night. First one you can watch with us in N one bar London Bridge. It is. There we go. We got it in. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so the fourth seed, Boston Celtics versus the fifth seed, Indiana Pacers. A tasty matchup, if ever there was one. This is a weird one. You've got the Pacers, who obviously, after Victor Oladipo went down, nobody quite knew what was going to happen to them. Everyone just assumed they would they would get bad. They haven't. They've stuck in there. And they've hung around in what has been a really strangely competitive and fun to watch Eastern Conference this season. Um, the Celtics have had a lot of injury problems recently, and they've had all kinds of chemistry se- uh, issues all year, You know, from Kyrie flirting with the Knicks openly all the time to... The recent problems they've had with um, with Marcus Smart going out injured, which is going to cause them problems. But I think that that this series is just going to be really gritty, really, really grindy, um, and it, it is just going to be down to the, the adjustments that the, that Nate McMillan or Brad Stevens end up making, and whether or not the X factor. I'm waving my fingers in the air of Gordon Hayward shows up and plays like the Gordon Hayward who used to, you know, own own the Western Conference with the East, with the Jazz, but. Um, it looks like it was a series that was going to be Boston with a clear advantage, but I just I think they've they've lost the the advantage recently. I think they've they've clearly got the talent, but they've had a lot of issues. And whether that will come together against the Pacers, I don't know. Who are completely the opposite. They are a team that has got it together. Like they know their roles. They're they're, they're like Brooklyn. They know what they're doing. They know where the pecking order is and who's doing what. Um, and now Bogdanovich has not got to worry about Marcus Smart harassing him all the time. So. That might open up a few things, but this is a really tough series to call, I think. Yeah, it is. And I, I feel a little bit disappointed for the Pacers that they slipped out of the, the fourth spot and lost home court advantage because that, yeah. you know, that's something that would have gone massively in, in, the, in their favour. Um, on paper, the Celtics should take this, but with all the chemistry issues and everything that's happened to them this year, it's really difficult to say anything with confidence about them. You've got the underachievers versus overachievers, like <laughs> yeah. And at the start of the season, I had the Celtics going to the finals, like before the season started. <laughs> now I'm just sat there going, <laughs> "That was a dumb thing to say." But um, I, I honestly don't know. I think this, I think this could go seven games. It's gonna, it's, it's gonna be a really, really, really interesting series. I'm just gutted that Victoria Depot is not going to play a role in it. Yeah, I'm just I'm I'm so amazed that the 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 Pacers have survived without Victor Oladipo. It's just it's unbelievable. But they've done it by just continuing to defend and and taking care of business. Like they beat they beat the bad teams, and that's what you need to do in basketball. If you beat the bad teams and you have a so so record against the good teams, then you're laughing basically. And that's what they've gone out and done. And they've had great performances from from core players. That Darren Collison's been magnificent for them. Um, but yeah, I, I just I, I don't know how you call this. I could see it going six or seven. But like if Boston figure it all out, then the talent gap is massive. You know, Kyrie Irving is probably good enough to win the series by himself. Um, Gordon Hayward probably is as well. If Al Horford plays well, then the Celtics are usually pretty difficult to beat. But if he doesn't show up, then there's all sorts of questions. I think Marcus Smart being out is is massive. Like, I mean, Jamie, how do they replace Marcus Smart? Like, I, I don't, I don't, I, they can't, can they? They can't, but I don't think they need to in this series. Like, Indiana's offense is is running through Bogdanovich now, right? Yeah. So, okay, he doesn't have to go up against Smart. He's going to get locked down by Jalen Brown instead. Um, if you're Indiana, you want Miles Turner on the floor for his defense against Horford to keep up with him. But you also need Sabonis' offense. And, and those two haven't done tremendously well um, when on the floor together. So... I think this is a bad series for Indiana. I, I don't think this is the matchup that um, that that that's going to allow them to thrive. Yeah, no, that's, that's interesting because like me and Mike seem to be quite strongly on the on yeah, the other I was, side. I was we, we don't to know hear that, but you guys we don't know where we're standing. <laughs> <laughs> the, the reason why, though, I mean, admittedly, since Oladipo has gone down there, I think they're like seven and twelve or something like that, um, which isn't great, but. They've they've managed to stay afloat, bizarrely. Like it's it, it. You'd have thought. Firstly, they shouldn't have been in the third seed, you know, when Oladipo was playing. And the fact they've managed to not only ho- hold on to a playoff spot, but hold on to to I know is it the fourth seed they were in. It, it, irrespective, they they had a home court advantage seed. 
they've managed to not only stay in the playoffs but still be you know the fifth seed it just shows there's some sort of level of resilience there and they have got some savvy guys i boston like i say on, on paper boston should absolutely cakewalk this but i've got no confidence in them the way that they they've just just absolutely messed this season up for want of a better description they just they just this was supposed to be the 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 year that the celtics sort of rose to glory again as as a as a powerhouse and it said they bumbled their way into a fourth seed yeah it's been a league of, it's been a sort of a season of distractions you had all the anthony davis stuff and then whether or not they were going to give up uh jason tatum for him and then jason tatum didn't have a great start to the season um has, has been pretty much up and down but he's been taking advice from kobe in the summer so that probably explains a lot of that um, especially the erratic shooting and the performances that he's he's come out with, and then you 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 relying on guys like Kyrie Irving to to keep keep the team together, and Kyrie's never really been that guy. Like if there's a second, there's a little bit of you know disjointness in the the locker room. Then Kyrie's probably n- not exactly going to help salvage the situation. Um, but th- they've they've looked okay the last couple of weeks. Um, the biggest spot for me is just the way that. Gordon Hayward's played recently. He's averaging 16.9 point, uh, nine points per game on 62% shooting over the last seven games. So they kind of just need to rely on him um, in this series. And if he's, if he has a spark and plays like he did against Miami the other week, then they'll be laughing because it, it's the talent gap that the, the pace just, just can't close. Um, but yeah, I've, I've, I don't, I don't know who's winning this series. I think, I think I'm just, I'd, I'd probably side with Boston purely on the the talent perspective, and it's it's probably going five or six games. Yeah, I'm, I'm siding with Boston, but I say it, and it's probably, and it, it's not because it's the four five matchup either. It's genuinely because I don't trust Boston. This is the, <laughs> the matchup I'm most concerned about not going the way I think it's going to go. Yeah, I just want to point out something I I learned earlier today. And that there's a place called Boston in England, <laughs> and it's conveniently yeah. down the road from a place called Swineshead, which is particularly fitting. And yeah, I, I just wanted to bring that up. I, I, met, I met a guy from <laughs> Boston last last year. Yeah, he was uh, a games journalist, and uh, he he was in Athens with us, and he was just like, "It's a terrible, terrible place. Don't ever go there." <laughs> so um, apologies if you're listening from Boston, but that came from one of your own. So <laughs> uh, okay. just to clarify, the, U- the UK Boston, the UK Boston, UK Boston, yeah. the original Boston, the original. Right, moving on. Uh, the Western Conference. Uh, I targeted 40 minutes of this pod. It's never going to happen. I'm laughing my head off now. Uh, <laughs> I laugh my head off every time you say we're going to have a strict policy of 45 minutes. And oh, I know. Spend I know. seven minutes introducing me. <laughs> uh, talking about stuff we shouldn't be talking about. Um, anyway, the, the Golden State Warriors finished in the number one seed. Um, they will play the Los Angeles Clippers, who are the number eight seed, who are the surprise number eight seed. Clippers all seem to be gearing up for a big run at free agents this summer. But here they are competing in the first round of the playoffs. It's It's just a remarkable... Um, story really but there's not any teams and there's no team in the NBA that can just flick a switch like the Warriors can and I think that we're probably going to see it um, in these playoffs I really struggle to see the Clippers taking uh, taking you know a couple of games they might take one um, but that's probably down to mistakes or some bitter arguments on the on the Warriors part but I I think this is the Warriors are loving this matchup They're, they have nothing to complain about can we do a little over under on how many minutes per game DeMarcus Cousins gets to play in this series? <laughs> I want to set I want to set the line at 19 minutes. Are you guys going over or under? Under. Yeah. Under. Probably, probably, yeah. So for context, he averaged 25 for the regular season. Oh, we well, you got under then. You going under 19? Yeah. Same. Yeah, Surprise. I think I'm going under too. Well, that was um I think that I think as I'd hoped. I think they're going to piss about. <laughs> I <laughs> see. I don't think they are. I I think like this isn't the best matchup for them. I think talent, obviously, talent wise, there's a there's a huge gap, and they they could very well sweep it. But I don't think these games, even if they're up by fifteen or twenty, would be easy games because this is a team that's going to fight them and literally fight them if needs be. And <laughs> Patrick like, Beverly's on this team, <laughs> exactly. And how well is how well is Steph Curry? been in the past when he's gone against physical guards who have pushed him around Not great. it's it's so affected his performance and he he's he has picked up sort of niggling injuries that have, that he's carried forward with him in the playoffs i think this could be a really um 
impactful series, not because it, it stops the Warriors, but because it hampers them somehow. And I, I genuinely am intrigued to see how the Warriors can keep Steph away from, from, from Beverly. But even if they don't, who are the Clippers throwing at Durant and Thompson that's going to slow them down? No, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like they still might win games by 20, but they're they're gonna they're gonna the amount of space that Curry creates for everyone else. If he's hampered in any way, this, where where they progress next, if he's not fully fit when they start to when that talent gulf starts to close, yeah, that's where it could it could have an impact. I'm not saying it's gonna. I mean, this could this could be a sweep quite easily. You're just gonna get a team that plays really hard against the team that can just do what they want with you. But that matchup, the way they try and play Curry, that's what's intriguing me. Like, I, I, you know, I don't particularly care who they throw at Clay and KD because it's not going to stop them. But I just, I'm just intrigued to see how that has an effect on the narrative later on in the playoffs. Yeah, well, I, I mean, in the the early matchups this season, we we saw the Clippers use Avery Bradley against Steph Curry, but obviously they can't do that now because because he's gone. So <laughs> it will come down to to what Doc Rivers decides and you, you'll probably get Patrick Beverly like you said or you might get Shea Gilgis Alexandra who could he could probably do a pretty good job He's, they're both gritty defensive guards they'll get in your face I get what you mean I think it will be a physical series even if it's a sweep it's probably going to be a really really tough competitive series that will take quite a bit out of the Warriors um, something which they probably haven't traditionally had in the first round in the last few years um, but I, I, I'm again like Jamie I don't see how they stop Kevin Durant and the other guys that are on that team like Kevin Durant right now is he's just morphed into the perfect basketball player like it, it's 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 frightening watching how easy the game is to him everyone's been you know we still have this debate about who's the, who's the best player at the moment but like if you've watched the Warriors this season and the way Durant how effortless and easy everything comes to him it is without a shadow of a doubt. It's it's between him and Stephen Curry. You have the two best players in the NBA on the same team right now, and you're gonna have to guard one and give up to the other. And unfortunately, you know the Clippers are, are not gonna be able to. They they just don't have the the the, the personnel to to match up with the, this Warriors team. So I'm probably going to sweep. But if the Clippers took a single game, I wouldn't wouldn't be surprised. But purely because of how well coached they are and how well they play, and I think Montrez Howell is gonna have a. He's going to be a guy who like shines yeah. on this stage. Mm -hmm. I I totally agree. This is a great opportunity for a lot of Clippers players so to earn says. earn money for the rest of the, you know to prolong their careers and go from being you know under the radar guys to guys who might end up being overpaid but still half good. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but bro some breaking news uh, from Woj. <laughs> uh, what's, it, what's, it, what's happened now? Grizzlies have dismissed coach JB Bickerstaff. Oh, okay. And so, like the entire front office too. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And, and reassigned GM Chris Wallace to a scouting capacity in the front office. Um, so from GM to scout. Ouch. Oh wow. Um, league sources tell ESPN VP John Hollinger. He's, oh, he's been there for he's ages. The stats guy, will also move into a senior advisory role. Yeah. That is an overhaul. Chris Wallace has been there for flipping donkey years, like 2008 or something, like a long, long time. I only know that because I was purely looking at possible replacements for Magic. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that that's um, interesting. Yeah, that is. That's the, the the Grizzlies are spicing, shaking things up. But then again, so are the Kings. But they do that all the time. Um, anyway, playoffs. Denver Nuggets. They're the second seed. They will play the San Antonio Spurs. It's a shame Hugh's not here. Um, but this is basically experience versus youth. I do think the Nuggets will take it in the end, but I purely think they'll take it just because they've they've, they've been magnificent all season, like, and they've got some fantastic scorers on that team: Nikola Jokic, Jamal Murray, Gary Harris. Like, I know they're all under twenty four and they're all making their their sort of postseason debut, but I think they've more than proved to everybody this season that they can they can win games when it counts. And their home record this season is phenomenal. They're thirty four and seven at home this year, which is the best record in the league. Um, and they've got home court advantage this series. So even if it goes seven, I'm still taking the Nuggets. Yeah, I think this is the matchup that they wanted. Um, you didn't want to get stuck with OKC. The old guys. <laughs> you probably didn't want to get Utah. We've seen Aldridge and DeRozan in the playoffs, so um, they're, they're not going to intimidate you. And I, I think that Denver definitely caught a break because they might not have fared so well against OKC. 
Yeah, I, I get that. It's still not an ideal matchup for them. I, I don't think though. I think I think they are gonna. It, this isn't a cakewalk. This is this is the Spurs. This is Pop. This is a team who knows how to play at the slow pace that that Denver like to play at, and they've got a couple of guys who have experience of of putting up numbers in the playoffs. And yeah, I, th- I think the experience will go some way in this series. Denver, for as great as they've been all season, finished the. They finished the, the the run to the end of the regular season uh, five and six. They weren't great. No, they were pretty so bad. That, yeah. That's not ideal. They are inexperienced. I, I'm not, you know, so what? They've got to start somewhere. The expectations, despite being the second seed, which they managed to cling on to, aren't, aren't going to be sort of... They're not expected to win the title this year. If they get out the first round, well done anyway, because they've not been there in, in donkey's years. I, th- I think this could be a problem for them. I think this could be a, a series that goes to goes to seven. It probably will be a problem for them, but the way I'm looking at this right now, if I'm a Nuggets fan, is it's probably like the younger days of the Warriors when they were going up against, funnily enough, Grizzlies. the Spurs and the Grizzlies and um, you know, having their sort of baby steps into the postseason. And I think that's what we'll get this year. I think they've got the Nuggets have got a lot of depth. There's a lot of talent there. Paul Millsap's probably the most experienced guy on the roster in terms of the postseason um, games played, but you're going up against LaMarcus Aldridge and DeMar DeRozan and Patty Mills, and they must have like 150 games plus combined of like, you know, playoff experience. And then you've got Mike Malone, who is making his coaching debut in the playoffs against Greg Popovich, (laughs) who, you know, has won countless championships and a hell of a lot of games. So yeah, the odds are stacked against them, but I purely think that a lot of this is going to come down to who can win games away from their building. Um, the Nuggets aren't great away, so I kind of think that everyone's going to take their home games, and then it'll end up just being, you know, a seven game in Denver, and the youth and the fans and the experience will will sort of ride them out, and that's how they win that series. I'm going to do another over under, and I'm going to set the bar <laughs> at two. How many games before Pop starts talking about, or in fact, anyone starts talking about the altitude? I'm going over. I'm going over too. Okay. Are we <laughs> counting broad? That's... Are we counting broadcasters in this? Uh, no, just like, no, forget the broadcasters. Oh, God, if Mike Jackson's uh, doing it, we're stuffed. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I'm talking like where one of, one of the, co- it'll probably be Pop, in my mind, says something, you know, even if it's tongue-in-cheek about altitude. Our old guys couldn't cope with the altitude. Yeah, that sort of thing. We've but, been coming uh, here for 20 cool. years, but we can't cope with it. <laughs> I, I, will, I will write that down and uh, make a mental note as well. Don't know why I need to do both, but, uh, and I, I will get back to you both when it, does or doesn't happen yeah i think if denver wins a series they have it's critical they win games one and two that's the way yeah. i phrase it win those home games get the momentum and then you know just run with it that's that's the bit that's the way they win this series and, and the uh, thing is, though, based on their road record this year <laughs> for the for the spurs winning those games in denver will be easy for denver or should be in it yeah. they've been yeah. terrible on the road um but but trying to win in san antonio that's going to be tough. <laughs> yeah, it's bizarre how how you know night and day the Spurs are, depending on where they're playing. It's it's nuts. Yeah, if you're going to stay up and watch this one as well, by the way, that's three thirty a.m. on Sunday morning. Um, so so you can watch that with us as well. <laughs> <laughs> we, we'll be there for that. You better get your Red Bull ready. Yep. Yeah. Get Red or, Bull on uh, tap. Uh, I don't know. You're gonna need it. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be on uh, espresso martinis. Oh wow! Okay, Cosm- that's very cosmopolitan of you. No, cosmopolitan is a different cocktail entirely. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> good, uh... Anyway, right, the uh, the Portland Trailblazers, Mike's Portland Trailblazers. Sorry, sorry, Mike, I have to do that. Um, they mine. They, Why they, not? They are up for sale. Well, they're not up for sale. They're up, are you selling them? They they might be up for sale. Oh, yeah, uh, I'm not selling them. Um, the, the them. Paul that's Allen's that's sister, maybe. Oh. Anyway, um, Portland the Trailblazers, the third seed, they will play the Oklahoma City Thunder. My God, this is a this is the best matchup of the playoffs, I think. Uh, well, the round one, anyway. Um, they've had some fiery encounters during the regular season. Josef Nurkic is out. This is kind of CJ McCollum and Damian Lillard versus Paul George and Russell Westbrook and then whoever else decides to show up in the series and make a difference. I think the Thunder are probably going to edge this one out as magnificently as... You know, Damon Lillard's been playing as as good as CJ McCollum is. CJ's a little bit injured at the moment. I think that might have a big effect on this series. Um, I don't see Portland getting getting the offensive production from 
from some of the other guys on that team. And then they're going up against Russell Westbrook, who's just a freak. Like if if Russ plays the way we expect him to play, then he could win the series by himself. But then you add him to a legitimate MVP candidate, or at least he was a legitimate MVP candidate early on in the season in Paul George. There, I mean, there's there's negatives and positives to both sides here. I guess the Thunder could come across as lazy against Houston during the week. They they were not playing well and they were down in that one, but then they almost like flicked a switch and went, oh, hang on, let's just go out and win this. And they came back and Paul George hit a game winner in the end and that solved that one. That so, as well. That was nice. Yeah. Um, but the matchups between these two teams, you know, there's been scraps and that was the game that Nurkic was tripped and then Russ was tripped and... Uh, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, Thunder are going to win this. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you want me to say? They they swept the regular season series four 0 They did. Um, historically, how have, C, have how have CJ and Dame uh, done against guards who are who are physical and and bigger than them? Because it certainly didn't work against Rondo and Holiday last year. Um, and I think that that Westbrook is the kind of antagonist who. I mean, what was he? Who was it? He was shouting at yesterday. Uh, not yesterday. The, the other, the other game. He was really going at a guy on the wing. Oh God, I can't remember. It was one of the Rockets guys, and it resulted in like an air ball or something. And, like he's going to get in people's heads, and I, not Dame's heads, but necessarily. But I just think, I just think they're a sort of team that those two guys will struggle against. And yeah. now that uh, Youssef is is done, they have no tertiary scorer who can pick up the slack. So this is a vote of no confidence in Zach Collins? <laughs> I wouldn't say no confidence, but not enough confidence to think that they're actually going to have a chance in this series. Yeah, he's not got a lot of experience and he's going to be going up against Stephen Adams, who's built himself and built his reputation in the playoffs the last, you know, five years. So, Do you it's... not think that Damian Lillard's got something to improve this year, Mike? Do I not think he's what? Sorry? Do you not think that Lillard has something to prove this year? I was going to say, do the Blazers not have something to prove most to years. as a general? But especially last, like he looked bad against Drew Holiday last year. Yeah, but well, yeah, he has got something to prove. I'm not convinced he has a no- enough support around him and is going against a matchup that's ideal enough for him to be able to prove it. The, 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 you... the... Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I was going to say the funny thing about this is you watched the games last night when Portland were clearly trying to lose to the Kings. They put six guys out on the floor who haven't played a lot the entire regular season. You know, they're resting their best guys. I think they were proactively avoiding trying to play the Thunder, and then it's it's ended up being that they're going to play the Thunder. So now it's a case of how do you motivate those guys who have lost to them four times this, this season already, who got embarrassed last season in the first round of the playoffs. Like they're potentially facing that again because we all know the, how well the Thunder play when they actually decide to play basketball. But there's other issues with them that could actually work in, in Portland's favour. But I think Portland have got something to prove. I think Damian Lillard is he's a special character. Like he's in his own he's in his own mode. Like he's he's come out recently and talked about being in the, the smaller market and just wanting to play for Portland, you know, for the rest of his career and just being happy where he is and there's 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 something about him that makes me not want to doubt him, if that makes sense. Like I mm-hmm would not be surprised if he came out and absolutely balled out in this series um yeah i can see him uh, averaging uh, like 36 yeah <laughs> i still can't but, see that but... but is that enough for them for them to beat the thunder who are a very very good defensive unit when they want to be <laughs> that's the thing they've, they've been poor defensively since the all-star break but they're still ranked the fourth best yeah. defense in the league the blazers have a, a storming offense they're third ranked offense in the league uh it's it's for me. It's a case of those two. They won't cancel each other out. They're going to obviously have an impact on on uh, how the other team plays, obviously. But the the key thing for me is that if the Thunder somehow discover their offense, which is a lot easier to uh, well, it's not a lot easier to do at all. But it's a, it's a lot scarier concept if they suddenly discover how to to put the ball in the hoop again. They could just tear this one completely open. Yeah. Paul George has traditionally played pretty well in the postseason as well. Like he has had slumps during the regular season campaigns, especially after All Star breaks. He gets the playoffs and he just he he switches the notch. Um, I feel I like think... I'm being talked into to leaning towards the Blazers somehow because like I, I wonder how <laughs> how how impactful uh, this injury is on on George as well because 
he he is although although Russ is the 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 heartbeat of this team, George is the better player. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. But so, I think if I think if Russ Russ plays to his potential, then he's he causes more than enough problems, and he'll yeah. be going out day and all night. So it it, it 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 could be you know you could you could class it as a toss up. But I just think the way that the Blazers were playing last night and the way they went out and who they put out kind of shows that they have some sort of mental barrier that they don't want to end up facing the Thunder, and now they're here, <laughs> so they're gonna have to deal with it. Unfortunately. Um, do we want to make predictions on this one, or is it too close to call? <laughs> I'll take the Blazers in six. Ooh, Ooh. wow! Come, e- elaborate, come on, because you, you sort of tried to, <laughs> you tried to egg me on with uh, should Dame has Dame got something to prove, and then we we sort of well, went down a different route. Both Lillard and Westbrook are gonna hit the turbo button from the opening tip. We know that. Problem is when Westbrook hits the turbo button. He either goes bonkers and puts up like 50, 20, and 20. <laughs> oh, he's terrible. Or he shoots two for 20 from the field. Yeah. I think if Lillard hits the turbo button, it, it's lights out. He's that kind of player where if he wants to elevate his game, not only is he going to elevate his game and play exceedingly well, he's got that Iverson impact where his teammates want to see him succeed and they're going to step up their game just to make sure that it happens. I, I... Mm, they haven't historically stepped up though for him. I mean, this is this is same. This is essentially the same Blazers roster with a few few switches that it has been for t- three seasons now. But this um, this year it's different because he, he's he's coming off the the embarrassing performance in last year's playoffs, and everyone's talking about how he doesn't match up against Westbrook. He's got to have a chip on his shoulder right now. I I love the confidence. I can't fault it in your confidence in, in Dame. I I just don't think it's enough. Yeah, I'm just trying to get your hopes up. I think Yeah, it's not working. A, I think you could <laughs> generally make a solid case for Damian Lillard being the best point guard in the Western Conference, maybe in the NBA, like if you looked into the numbers and things, but that's a question for another Better day. Better than Steph? Yeah, I was going to say. There's a oh, certain well, yeah. I'm excluding Steph. He gets his own character. Oh, right. right. He gets his own. So God, God, tier does, God tier does not apply to anybody else, unfortunately. I do find it interesting that the two best leaders in the NBA right now are point guards playing out west. Yeah. I, 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 th- I, think, I think Dame's incredibly underrated still as well. People don't appreciate how good he is. And I, I'd say that's a big market. Sub- They'd be all over him. Every every day you'd see Damon Lillard highlights. <laughs> yes. uh, okay. Right, moving on to the uh, the final matchup we've got to discuss, Houston Rockets and the Utah Jazz. Uh, we mentioned this very briefly at the start of the show, but this is the one where Houston ended up falling to fourth and now they end up playing the Jazz. This is a matchup of two of the best teams um, in the NBA post-All-Star break. And it's uh, it's it, it's a tasty one. It, it really is. Um, this one's on Sunday at two thirty a.m. So that'd be Monday morning for us. I'm getting confused now. Um, so if you're going to be up and watching this one, you, you you're going to enjoy yourself. Um, <laughs> on your own on a Sunday morning. On your, on your own on a Sunday morning. Yeah, absolutely. But um, I mean, Houston played them last year. They won in five. They mainly won that series because. The Jazz spent all their time double teaming James Harden, which meant that Chris Paul was open and Chris Paul just went nuts. Um, that's the way that series works. I wouldn't be surprised if it was the same this year. The one thing I have to say, though, is Rudy Gobert has been magnificent this season. And Donovan Mitchell, ever since I wrote that article, got to keep mentioning it, <laughs> has just become an efficient lights out shooter. But how, how well can this offense compete with the Rockets, who are just unbelievable on the offensive end? Come, uh, you know, a, a four, five, six game series. Um, it's it's a difficult one. Do do you think Houston would have preferred someone else? Um, because I guess you could make an argument that the Jazz are actually the team that they probably would want to play because, like, there's not a great deal of offensive talent there. Yes, fair enough. Defensively, they're 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 formidable, but they can't. You know, if it turns into an offensive showdown, then there's only one team winning it. I, th- I think they might have preferred someone like the Spurs, actually, someone whose defense isn't as good. But I wonder how successful. I mean, because this defense is all geared around Gobert, yeah, and the Rockets' offense is is well threes and layups. So if they can, if they can pull Go- Gobert away from the hoop, 
this is this is exactly the team that'll do it. And if they can't pull from Gobert away from the hoop, then James Harden's going to continue shooting like twelve threes a game or something ridiculous. And I just I just think James Harden himself is just so offensively the nuanced maker. that I I just it doesn't matter how good your defense is because no person can stop him. Yeah, effectively, no. unless you're the Bucks and you, and maybe they'll t- that will be interesting to see whether they've taken anything from the way the, the Bucks schemed against Harden, uh, where they they played him so high and um, forced him, uh, was it to his right? I uh, can't remember exactly, but they they played they just they played him like you would play someone in high school when you realise they've only got one hand. Um, <laughs> it's just you know it's, it's nuts. Yeah. Am I the only one who's not excited for this series, like, at all? Like, I I just don't see how Utah keeps pace in this one. Like, if Donovan Mitchell goes crazy and plays as well as James Harden, I guess they have a chance. But, I mean, that's not going to happen. It's it's too soon for that. Yeah, we've had a couple of games in the regular season where it has just been, like, watching two players playing, you know, against each other one-on-one. It's just been Harden versus Mitchell. And we could end up seeing that again, but it's really difficult to know what the jazz do because like as you know yeah you could you could trap james harden with rudy gobert but then you're risking picking up fouls early on and if you lose gobert in in a game that's going to make a massive difference on how you game plan for the rest of it but if you do end up doing that you force guys like pj tucker and eric gordon to play well like you force them to hit those corner threes and you force them to be the critical cogs in that machine which i don't think they're they're built for but it's it's a strange matchup. I I think the Jazz are so good defensively that they can they can certainly make this a series and keep things close. But if when it comes down to like the clutch performances and needing you know that three with a guy draped in your face, then well, James Harden's on the other team, so you're probably going to struggle. And there's a lot of injuries nagging the the Jazz as well. Like just like top of your memory, like Corver's been on and off like a yo-yo recently and Ricky Rubio has been banged up like they've had problems and they had problems last year the Jazz they went into their series is last year with with injury issues and yeah it, it's almost like this Jazz team hasn't changed much at all really I mean I, I know they've got new players and Grayson Allen's there and he had 30 the other night and he might be someone to keep your eye on keep, keep your eye on but for me there isn't the Jazz don't have the versatility on the bench that the the Rockets do to to sort of really shake up this series so i'm i'm going houston in six yeah i think it may be five or six in the, the four games they've played this year they've split the series two two yeah. both teams winning at home and on the road but three of those games have just been blowouts so <laughs> it just i don't know it's, it's i, I can I, see I, where I would, jamie's coming from about not yeah. getting excited because the rockets could just blow it away and then you'd be bored for like you know four games <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i i think i don't I don't think the Jazz are the most entertaining to watch anymore. No, they're not. And there's certainly a school of thought that don't enjoy watching Harden play. So you might find that this is a series, exactly as Jamie says, that people aren't excited for. I don't get that. I don't get the whole, I don't like watching James Harden play, but that's a whole other story. Um, (laughs) And you, You can at least take some enjoyment out of watching Donovan Mitchell in this series. He's worked out how to get past the double teams that were causing him all kinds of problems at the start of the year and has just completely turned his game around. And that's the sign of a, a great player. Like he's he's realized where the mistakes were in his game and he's built upon them. But Breaking unfortunately, news. unfortunately, I don't think he's good enough to uh, to win the series by himself. Uh, yeah, breaking news. Larry Drew has uh, parted ways with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Oh my God, everyone's leaving. What's going on? <laughs> it's just insane, isn't it? We're doing a, trying to do a playoff show. We're here having to mention all, all these uh, all these just absolutely terrible teams who have decided, well, barring the Kings who weren't terrible, but teams who have decided to bin off their coaches. Yeah. Well, we have done it, lads. We have done the playoff preview in under an hour and 10 minutes, which I think is quite impressive for us. Yeah. It, it is actually that considering is, uh, when me and you did a show last year Mike we split it into two because it was so long <laughs> yeah but to be fair I made everyone did, was it last year or the year before I made everyone predict every single part yeah, of the bracket yeah uh, yeah yeah that, that that makes things awkward yeah. um, <laughs> oh dear right is there, any, is there anything that you guys just have on the top of your heads that you want to you want to say or discuss before we before we go Jamie is there anything over over the over the pond that you can think of how's our Brexit doing <laughs> oh have god got, have we gotten that one fixed uh, Should I not we, be asking we, about that? We've already we've run got an too extension, long. I think. <laughs> I, pff, I extension know. to the end of time, by the sounds of it. 
Yeah. Brexit. Nuts. I was saying to that, Jamie. Jamie. <laughs> uh, I was saying to him before you start a pod, don't mention Brexit in a house anywhere at the moment because it's an instant family debate. Yeah. <laughs> and Mike sounds really, really fed up now that we've said it. <laughs> Just ruined Mike's night. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Mike's no, covered okay. in like vomit right now. <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 I am. It, it, I am in an absolute state right now. Do you. Well, we appreciate it. We appreciate you uh, going through the pain and playing with one shoe and all the th- <laughs> all the things that you do for us in this podcast. But no shoes right now, so uh, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm going through twice the pain. No shoes. No. Does your uh-huh. son have shoes? Like, I'm, I'm getting concerned about the footwear situation in your family. Do you know what? Really, like he he doesn't really wear them at all. I mean, he doesn't walk. Oh, he's another so... no shoe brother. Exactly. I mean, sometimes he has socks, but you know. You know, what's the point? He didn't walk anywhere. Can we get right. anyone from Nike to start sending him shoes just to make oh, yeah. sure if that this if doesn't you want turn to into send an issue? Shoes, please feel free. He has got a pair sat in a box uh, in the wardrobe waiting, waiting. And it's a pair of uh, Jordan 11 Concords, of which I have the matching adult size. So at some point, we're going <laughs> to... Uh, That's adorable. We're going to out in them. Um, up. Go down the park in his pushchair with his Jordans on. That'll be... Uh... Yep, so there you go. He has got a pair, but I'm making him wait for him. Well, Fab- till his feet are big enough. <laughs> Fabulous. Right. Uh, just before we go, one final shout out to the NBA playoffs opening night, which is obviously taking place this Saturday, April 13th at number one in London. Uh, that's uh, on Duke Street Hill, uh, which is just across from London Bridge, I believe. So if you're if you're about, please do uh, go and pop your head around what time is is it on from i know it was originally 3 p.m but i don't know whether that's been well we pushed it back altered. to 6 30 now that the official schedule has come out because the original schedule i saw um oh, 5 p.m had, game. had like a 5 p.m game so this these God, are later we have historically had yeah um, we have yeah. Yeah. i kind of feel annoyed about this but um i'm okay with it actually because i don't think i could have handled starting at, at, at 3 p.m and going till half four in the morning i think somehow <laughs> 7 30 till six is better yeah so if you're gonna if you go into that please check out the website doubleclutch.uk there's a section on uh, there's a post on there about reserving your place using the eventbrite link which um which you set up so go and check that out um the games are obviously going to be taking place now that they are confirmed 7 30 nets uh sixes and then we're going to have 10 o'clock magic raptors 1 a.m Clippers, Warriors, and then 3.30 a.m., if you're still there, uh, Spurs, Nuggets. Yeah, should be good fun. There's actually some, there's some exciting matchups there. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, and I might have some matchup. prizes with me as well. <laughs> <laughs> you bribe me people with shoes. Yeah, all the shoes that I don't wear. You can <laughs> don't wear. <laughs> uh, brilliant. Anyway, uh, please check out the Twitter at Double Clutch UK. Uh, do follow us on Facebook and have we set up a Twitch? What's the Twitch? What's the Twitch address? At uh, Double Clutch UK. Double Clutch UK. We're on Twitch because Mike's going to be showing off his NBA 2K skills. <laughs> <laughs> Am I? Okay, brilliant. <laughs> Actually, it was for our secret plan that uh, Jamie hinted at last week about which involves you wearing masks. Me wearing but, masks. Yeah. yeah so great. there you go. You guys Bot have got some strange fantasies. <laughs> 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 uh, brilliant. Right. Thank you very much, guys. Hopefully, we'll catch you at some point during the week when we will be recapping or previewing more playoff games. It's the best time of the year. I can feel the energy, apart from the fact we're all asleep because it's like half ten. Uh, it's not for Jamie. No, no. no to, but it's quitting time at work, so. Quitting time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take that as a uh, time to go to get off the phone. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Mike. <laughs>